Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Emily Wishaw with Wishaw Wellness Live and Alignment here um, sharing my interview series this month for February of 2018 here with Amy Jones. Uh, I met Amy about th three years, four years ago we were talking and um, was really inspired by her coaching style and the work that she did. So Amy is an eating psychology coach, certified nutritionist, certified herbalist and nutritionist. And um, she teaches women how to get off the binge diet cycle and really establish um, into embodied relationship with their body soul wisdom, which is so beautiful mm. and amazing. And I, yeah, I, like, yeah, because of my own story, I love, love that work that you do. And mm, thank you. Um, I'm excited to, to chat and be here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, you're so welcome. So, we're just going to dive in. Okay. And we were kind of talking before about what we're going to talk about. And I think something that um, is really inspiring about the work that Amy does is um, how women, like what is self-acceptance? Mm. It's thrown around a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the self-care ideas and really getting into more, you know, receiving pleasure, all of that, like, you know, um, Sometimes we don't feel like we have time for a bubble bath or some people might not even enjoy a bubble bath. And how do we weave that in and how do we, what it really is self-acceptance, mm. which is a big question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, let's see, where would I start? I would say like, um, you know, I remember, uh, I, well, currently I'm still obsessed with Oprah. Hey, and, yeah. um, but, but Oprah was on, uh, TV in the, uh, sort of at the highlight of her show, I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I remember her having um, an expert on who, well, I remember her telling this story about she had this expert on that was basically saying, like, women should learn to prioritize themselves mm. and their relationship uh, with their husband above their children. Mm. And that this, that was a life coach that was on mm. the show. And this life coach basically like got booed off the stage. Oh, wow. So it was like in the late 90s. Whoa. And so I think that we have seen the conversation or the rhetoric mm -hmm. around self-care, self-acceptance, self-love. I think we've seen those words change. But I think the patterns and the like sort of like deeper held beliefs that we've all been raised with are mm -hmm. slower to change. Mm. And so I think there is this um, interesting intersection happening right now where women see like, yeah, it doesn't actually work for me to run on empty or yeah. it doesn't actually work for me to turn to food or alcohol or um, my accomplishments to fill myself up or to have myself feel good about who I am. Um, we're starting to come to that awareness that, like that something else is possible and something mm -hmm. else is available. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I think the foundation for truly like having that embodied relationship, like you mentioned about my work, mm -hmm. can be challenging when we don't really, we haven't in, a, in our culture, and maybe in many cultures, been taught any kind of roadmap. Totally. Like, how do you do that well? Yeah. How, what, what does, does that it look even like? mean to be embodied? Or I often, right. sometimes working with clients, like drop into your body, connect to, what does that mean? Right. Right. We're not, we live in a totally disembodied world. Yeah. Our day almost, you know, for a lot of us starts immediately with our phones, checking in, you know, email, Facebook, text, whatever. Totally. Computers, driving, we're just, yeah. Yeah, we are, yes. So there is a disconnection between, um, I was doing a podcast interview the other day and a woman, uh, I said like, you know, there is actually a communication coming from our bodies at all times um, that uh, we're just not attuned to, or we don't know how to quite speak that language of the body. Mm. And I think that's what you're pointing to is mm. like, um, we're kind of cut off from the neck up. Like this yes. is where our world is, right? Yes. Intellect, productivity. And we lose our power. Mm -hmm. We lose our power, our magnetism. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I was a doula for six years mm. um, and I saw so much power and potency um, in women's bodies as they gave birth and oh, they were pregnant and they were, you know, like really in this process of bringing life into the world. 
I was just struck over and over with how much power is there and how much that power is behind closed doors in a lot of ways in our culture. Or like you said, completely disembodied. Like mm -hmm. we have um, we have forgotten that that exists for yeah. the for the female body. So yes, yeah, especially yeah. for women to have. I mean, men too to have a relationship with their body. But for women, women we are such sensory beings, mm -hmm. and and so much intuition and creativity lies in here. And, right. Sort and I that. think that then when we're not able to find that connection or we forget we, that's why we seek turn to the binging right the diet the compulsion around food um, or or you know whatever it may be for you but right yeah yeah it's I think um, like I said there's that voice always sort of speaking that voice of your body that or that voice of your soul that says like maybe we could do this or mm -hmm. oh I, I'm feeling like this right and I think like on a sensory level, we can feel it mm -hmm. and then we're not sure what to do with it. So we turn to these analogs, right? Or these substitutes. And yet those analogs and substitutes don't quite do it. Mm -hmm. And so we then are wound, left with this feeling of like, something's wrong with me. Like, why don't I feel fulfilled? Why can't I accept myself? Like, why can't I experience more pleasure in my life or make more time from and and then it's just one more way that we're criticize. making ourselves wrong to criticize yeah. yeah I so appreciate you bringing that up because there can be a lot of judgment now you know if you're following somebody on Instagram or social media and they're all about self-care and acceptance and you're over here think really maybe struggling with that and then it's like oh well I'm right. must be bad what what is so say somebody's stuck in a loop where maybe just when they're by themselves or when they're you know trying to take some quiet time to actually cultivate a relationship with their body mm -hmm. and with and with their soul um, but that that's a challenge is there some like advice or suggestions you could give to a situation like that or mm -hmm. like some fun kind of ways like how, how do we even begin yeah. that process if, Great question. I um, I think we begin it the way we begin most things in life, right? So if you're trying to start an exercise program, mm -hmm. um, you start it slowly and deliberately, right? Like you don't go out and run 26 miles in the first week of starting to exercise. It's terrible. <laughs> um, I'm training for a half marathon. I have to run eight miles tomorrow. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I get to. I'm looking. I'm actually really looking forward to nice. it. But I could not do 26. Yeah. Go. So like. You start slow, yeah. right? You didn't start yes, with eight no. miles on your first mm -hmm. run. You maybe did a half mm -hmm. a mile or you did like two miles of walking and jogging. Yeah. And, and so that's how we do it with anything. So when it comes to like creating a deeper relationship with our body or, um, you know, wanting to, wanting to tune in more to our food, mm -hmm. um, it, I will have my clients do really deliberate practices of, okay, I just ate a meal. Um, they set a timer on their phone for maybe an hour after eating the meal and they just check in. How does my body feel? Do I, am I noticing more energy? Um, do I feel lethargic? Um, am I just preoccupied with my three o'clock coffee break where I can go get a pastry? Um, really starting to pay attention to the sensations and the physical feelings and the um, sort of self-talk that is happening um, and that can happen before a meal, during a meal. I often have women do it after a meal because I think that can be... I like that with the hour timer too. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's because it, I often have the best of intentions of... Doing something. Of, of, well, of tracking. I'm, I'm so curious about tracking everything from like my cycle to what I eat. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to get all this information. Mm -hmm. A little obsessed about it. <laughs> um, but I forget. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, set a timer like an yeah. hour after. This. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps you... Um, it, that's actually just a, another exercise that I'll have clients do is a set a timer for themselves to do deliberate check-ins mm, or to like take that. deliberate breaks. Yeah. Whether the break is just as simple as like taking 10 deep breaths, mm -hmm. remembering to drink water, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, like I had one client who had, uh, who has a really big job and she could get so, um, like, sucked into what her staff needed, what um, her clients needed, like the rush of the day, that the day would be over and she hadn't eaten. Mm -hmm. 
um, she was sort of like had this strung out depleted feeling at the end of the day and she would find herself in those days feeling really stressed and snapping at people or like regretting things that she had said or not feeling like she was making the best decision she wanted to make and so we really worked on okay let's set some deliberate times for you to maybe order food into the office or just take a break to check in and see how you feel yeah. or um, just to take five minutes to like um, breathe and walk around the building so that there is time that's built in that isn't all about intellect yes. intellect yeah. productivity and you know like um, accomplishment but there's time for uh, this vehicle breath, that you're walking around back. in. Yeah, because yeah. I think if we're only in this productive, narrow focused, my, we get burnt out. Mm -hmm. We do get crabby. We get really reactive. Mm -hmm. And I think this, I have this idea of like embodied leadership. Mm. And what does it mean to be an embodied leader? And I, to me, I'm like, that's what we need more walking around. And mm. when we have a connection, when we take that time to connect with our body, we, we, we respond differently. We're more open to different points mm -hmm. of view. We mm -hmm. can actually have a discussion as opposed to right. just hitting. Yeah. Well, and on a physiological level, it's helping your body, um, it's helping your nervous system to mm -hmm. like downregulate a little bit, to have that um, um, ability to flex and move and not just always have to be on hyperdrive. And in the case of this particular client, because she wasn't eating, it was also negatively impacting um, blood sugar, mm -hmm. hormone regulation, sleep cycles. And so that kind of living, yeah. you know, not only affects our psychology, but it's also actually really affecting our physiology. Totally. And yeah. what we typically do is like, oh, I'm so stressed out or, oh, I'm depressed. And so we start popping pills, which mm -hmm. like there are legitimate places and needs for that. I'm mm -hmm. by no means you know, trying to say like, that's a shameful thing to do, but there are other alternatives that in our fast paced, like I want a quick fix kind of culture, we've forgotten, oh right, everything's interrelated. Mm -hmm. And there's a way that I could be with myself differently, mm -hmm. that I could nourish myself in a, in a multitude of ways that then would have um, effects not only on my psychology, not only on my emotional life, but also phys physiologically, physically. Yeah, and I like that that how you broke it down, even for the physiological, like into little, just integrating small pieces into your day, because mm. that's like we we can all find five minutes mm -hmm. or setting a timer and just taking ten deep breaths, because that doesn't take any time, but it it, it huge changes. Yeah, uh, I even find I I notice when I'm in lines. Um, I had the impulse to get out my phone, mm -hmm. I'm like Let's see what's happening right. out there, right? Instead of in here, and I've been I've been really working to discipline myself to use my line time to really check in and just see how am I feeling, and then nice. based on that, like what would just make me feel just a little bit better? Like what would I like? What would mm. that? What what would that be? And I am surprised by how more often than not the answer of what I would like to feel a little bit better is to just be connected and present. Mm. Not all the time, but most of the time, mm -hmm. which it's, how simple is that? Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't mm -hmm. take me any time. Mm. I mean, it just takes the intention of, of giving that space. But yeah. yeah, I like the reminder of like through your day, like even if you have a, if you're, you know, in a high work level position yeah. and have a lot of responsibility weaving that in. Right. It's, you know, it's the time that you might spend gossiping with a coworker mm -hmm. or, um, procrastinating a project, right? You could take that time and use it to, um, you know, give yourself these small bits of nourishment, mm -hmm. these small bits of space throughout the day. Mm -hmm. What I love about what you said, um, that you'll stand in line and ask yourself, like, what would I like? Yeah. That to me feels really revolutionary mm -hmm. for a woman to, um, ask that question. And then mm -hmm. I imagine follow through on it. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. to, um, to really hold that, that like, what would I like as mm -hmm. priority? Because mm -hmm. pleasure is something that, um, I think we really, um, sort of minimize or we push away. We, it has kind of, um, it, it hasn't always had a good rap. Yeah. Yeah. I so want to talk to you about pleasure. 
Yeah. I'm curious about that. And so Amy and I, we were talking about pleasure before we got on here and I love kind of how you defined the, the two different ways of why pleasure might not be okay. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah. What, what do you, well, I, you know, I think that our relationship to pleasure, uh, has has gotten a bad rap um, in a lot of different arenas in our culture, right? So um, it's kind of taboo, or um, it, and I, I when I say pleasure, I'm just talking about like the enjoyment of your life, like mm -hmm. giving yourself things that have you feel good and and feel pleasurable, right? Mm -hmm. So massages or baths, or um, you know maybe it is sexual intimacy with a partner, or um, uh, just like the non like lighting a candle. Sure. Sometimes if I'm about to like go into doing computer mode and I'm like, I ask that question if, if I'm feeling resistant to it, what would I like? And I'm like, Oh, I'd like a candle here. I'd like my space mm. heater here. Like that feels good. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really small. Yeah. And so I think there's this way that, um, we've had a tradition of having pleasure sort of relegated as indulgent or decadent or unnecessary, right? Mm -hmm. In a fast-paced, busy, productive, production-oriented culture, pleasure doesn't really matter, right? If you're just producing, we'll just keep producing, keep being, and you know. And maybe idea of if, if you're just having pleasure all the time, then you're not a useful human being. Right, you're lazy. You're simple. You're, you're, you're not also useful. indulgent. Yeah. Selfish. Yeah. And so those are, those are um, cultural ideas that we see women getting right like you don't want to be selfish or you don't don't put yourself first like that's not what a good mother does or this idea of like the sacrificing kind of mother mm -hmm. is the opposite of a woman who like prioritizes pleasure yeah um but what i was saying to emily earlier is that it can be there's a lot of talk out there these days around self-care you've got to take care of yourself take care of yourself like and I said, you know, if a, if there is a woman who actually believes that pleasure mm -hmm. maybe isn't important or that, like, she doesn't have herself as a priority, mm -hmm. um, maybe she doesn't see her needs as valuable or worthy, that doing pleasurable things or doing self-care can often just feel like, she, like a costume she put on. Like, it, it's difficult to just jump from zero to 60 when it yeah. comes to self-care and pleasure mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a foundation for those nutrients to actually get in mm -hmm. right it's sort of like pouring a bunch of water on parched land mm -hmm. it doesn't actually sink in mm -hmm. to like the deeper earth to really like um nourish and and mm -hmm. nurture that that piece of land Hmm. If that does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking about that. The nourish that piece of land that it does, it does, and I think I appreciate you bringing up that that point because I think starting it, it just brings it back to the bite size. If mm. if, if you are someone who's in a place of you haven't been doing self care because you're a mom of however many or and working or just working or whatever it is and haven't felt like it's appropriate or allowed right. to give yourself that. What is like a small, you know, I would just start with like that. I like the five minutes. What's something that on a daily basis that feels really good to you? And maybe each day it can look different. Sometimes I've even created like list for myself. So when I'm in a challenging moment, I can look mm -hmm. at, oh, things that make me feel good. Like hula yes. hooping. Yes. If I can grab my hula hoop for like two minutes. Yep. You yeah. know, it doesn't, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is totally. kind of fun. Put on a music. So I think starting there. And so it's not like putting on a mask of, again, just another layer of, Things you should be doing. Yes. Self-care has become yeah. sort of like something yeah, I should, should be doing. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I, I don't actually have the, f my, I don't have like fertile land for pleasure to really sink mm. into. Like, um, so to your point, like how do you begin to like till the soil mm -hmm. or create fertile land? Um, in really small ways. So um, uh, just like you don't, you know, start running 26 miles the mm -hmm. first time you exercise, um, I have clients do this exercise that I call the list of 25. And so often what I see in women who are sort of like pleasure at a pleasure deficit is that they have turned to food mm -hmm. as their only sort of permissible place that they can get pleasure. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like, m you know, maybe some women are like, they turn to alcohol for that or they turn to gossiping. But, you know, in my particular line of work, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working with women around their relationship to food. And so 
I, I have them look at that list of 25. Like, is there another way that I could nourish myself right now, that I could bring pleasure into my life, mm -hmm. that I could feel comfort, that I could feel loved, yeah. um, that I could give back to myself that isn't stress eating the pint of ice cream yes. or binge eating half of the pizza. Mm -hmm. um, and so that list of 25 could be like, oh yeah, like um, going and sitting out in my garden mm -hmm. or um, playing with my dog for 10 minutes mm -hmm or um, crocheting, or uh, putting together a puzzle, or um, listening to music you like, hula hooping, riding your bike around town, um, going out to drinks with friends. Mm -hmm. Like, there's such a vast world of mm -hmm. options available, yeah. but we really can, we can get so like narrowly focused and we miss. And but, I think when we're in that habitual loop, that pattern, that's when it can be really challenging to seek out. So I love that creating right. the list ahead of time. And, and I, like I said, cause it is ultimately if we're going to food, we're going to alcohol, whatever it is, like our thing that we might be turning to instead of really turning in, um, it ultimately, we need to feel comfort. We need to feel safe. Yes. We need to feel like that pleasure and that love and acceptance. And so finding other avenues and, and, and broadening our horizon around other ways that we can feel that and, and working on built. And that's why I think I love that consistent small little bits each day. Yeah. Cause that's just helping to rewire your nervous system and build those muscles right, more. Right. Right. And I, I would say the other piece to that is like, um, believing that you're worth it. Yeah. Like believing that, um, it is worth it for you to take a few minutes to check in with your body. It is worth it for you to, um, really slow down enough to ask like, what would I like right now? Yeah. Right? Like that is um, that self-acceptance and that prioritizing yourself that you do matter and that there, um, there actually are like greater rewards to be had mm -hmm. when you do fill yourself up in these ways mm -hmm. and when you do like nourish the whole of yourself. Yeah. That um, reminds me of a quote since you brought up Oprah earlier mm -hmm. that I heard recently from her and... Um, she said, you know, some of the feedback she gets often from people is that she's too full of herself. Mm. Like, oh, who do you think you are? You're so full of yourself. Mm. And she's just owned that. And she's like, I am, I am full of myself. She's like, I am so full. My cup runneth over. Full. Yeah. She, so she has so much to give. Yeah. And she does give so much. She's made a huge impact. Mm -hmm. I think that's a beautiful example of it's, it's, it's not a bad thing to be full of yourself. Mm hmm because mm -hmm. what that ultimately means is, is you are so full, you can give. You're not giving from deficit, which right. is where we get resentful or needy or Burned all out. of that. Yeah. 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 I think the, I think the distinction is there's a difference between being full of yourself and being like arrogant yes. or narcissistic yeah. or yeah. self-absorbed, totally. right? Like, when someone is so full, mm -hmm. um, the natural outpouring is is that you want others to be that full too. Yeah, you want others to feel just as good as you do. Yeah, um, that's what truly happens from a woman who is full and likes herself mm -hmm. is that she wants that for everyone around her. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Amy. Is there any yeah. other little? I feel like you just gave so many takeaways. Mm. Any other like I don't know tips or things or on your mind that you want to share before we? Yeah, I um, I think the biggest thing that I find myself reminding women of is that um, uh, your worth is inherent simply because you're a human that walks mm. the earth, and that um, you were given a body and breath and a mind. Um, and that because of that, you're here and you get to experience the fullness that life has to offer. And so if you can entertain that idea that like, um, it is your birthright to mm. enjoy the life you were given, yeah. um, and to, um, live it to the fullest expanse that you want to live it. Um, cause I think we, um, I think we've really dimmed our light for many decades as women. Yeah. And, you know, along the way we have, it has started to get brighter and, and more turned on. And I think that, um, you know, to really see some of the shifts that so many of us are desiring, 
I do believe it's going to come from women's magnetism mm. having um, even greater space in the world. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love that. Yeah, it's our birthright. It is. Yeah. We're not, we don't have to prove. Yeah. I mean, w going through life, just sort of living miserably and um, going through the motions. Uh, I, I, I heard this quote. I'll, I'll end with this. Mm -hmm. Um uh, I was listening to Krista Tippett's podcast on being mm. and she, Ellen Burstyn was reading a short story um, called the doctor and the rabbi mm. and this doctor goes to the rabbi and says like you know will you talk to me about God like I don't actually believe in God but like talk to me about it like I you know I, I see people's health I see people die it's, it's hard for me as a doctor and the rabbi says something to the effect of um, when you die you will not have to ask forgiveness for the typical sins that we've been taught. You will have to ask forgiveness for living a small life. Oh. And I, I just was so struck by, wow. by that. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. I'm mm -hmm. going to keep that in. That's a really beautiful quote. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how can we, how can, how can people find you? How can yeah. we learn more about you and your work? Yeah, so um, my website is bodysoulwisdomschool.com. You can also find me on Instagram or Facebook uh, under that handle as well, Body Soul Wisdom School. Nice. And I'll put a link below. Great. Yeah. Um, and I work with clients all over the nation, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I'm based in Denver, Colorado. I do see local clients as well. Um, so I work with women across a spectrum of um, emotional eating, um, n digestive anxiety, hormonal type issues, um, with, with herbs and nutrition, yeah, that's awesome. um, as well as emotional and spiritual support. So beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amy. Yeah. It was such a pleasure. Here. Yeah. It was really, really fun for me. Good. I'm like, I feel like I could just keep talking to you <laughs> forever about these concepts. Yeah. Um, so thank you. I yeah. I really, really appreciate your time. Absolutely. And I look forward, yeah, if any, we'll send the links uh, for Amy and you can check out more about her work and I'll be curious to hear what you found useful or insightful um, from this and yeah, we'll talk again soon. Take care. Bye.